All right, everybody, today we are talking about Z8, Z9 camera settings, specifically for sports. Let's go. All right, everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Jack Beasley. I'm a freelance sports photographer in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about Z8, Z9 camera settings, specifically for sports. And I will tell you up front, these are my preferred settings for sports. Uh, you go to another YouTube channel, you may hear something a little different, but this is just the way I like to do it based on the experience, especially with the Z9, which I've had well over a year now, and the Z8, which has menu settings that are very, very similar to what the Z9 has. But we'll talk about whatever those differences as we go through this. Now there's some YouTube channels out there that go to a lot of detail on the menus on these particular cameras and all the functions and whatnot. I'm not gonna quite do that. I'm gonna keep it pretty down and dirty as far as sports settings in particular. I will link uh, one of those channels below. Go ahead and check him out after you watch this video, and but stick with me for those down and dirty sports settings. All right, let's get going. So I'm gonna start off here and I'm gonna go off of Z9, but the Z8 is very similar and I'll talk about whatever those differences are as we go through it. Now these cameras have a couple different menus, actually many, but the ones we're gonna focus on today are the photo shooting menu and the custom settings menu. Now these menus, as you can see right here, they have banks and A, B, C, D. Basically you could set up all these banks in a different way. That applies both with the photo shooting menu and with the custom settings menu. I'm just gonna do one right now. I'm gonna call it A, and I'm gonna call this my sports. Now, you can label these, you can change the name on them. I'm not gonna do it right now, but yes, you can rename them anything you want that'll fit in the, in the, the settings right here. All right, oh, we're just gonna go down. I'm gonna talk Z9, and if there's a change from Z8, I'll identify that at the time. So moving down, extended menu banks. Now I like to turn this on, uh, just gives me more functionality. Storage folder, uh, this is the default. I just leave it that. File naming, this is basically addresses the first three digits of the file. I like to do mine based on, well, my name and uh, what camera I'm using. I have two Z9s, so this is happens to be J for Jack. It's a Z9 and it's uh, number one, role played by a card in slot two. This is specific to the Z9, the Z8's a little different, which I'll get to. You have overflow backup. You put raw in the slot one, JPEG in slot two, or you can put JPEG in both slots, the CF Express cards. I like to do backup, that's just me. I like to have a secondary image just in case one of the cards goes bad, but you may wanna just go with overflow or one of these other options. Now the Z8's a little different. It has a primary slot and a secondary. Primary is the CF Express card. The secondary is the SD card. SD cards run much slower than CF Express cards. So you probably wanna put you know, your main images into the CF Express card, for example, RAW as opposed to JPEG, but that's up to you. So when we get to image area, you can choose the image area and the Z9 gives you FX which is full frame, DX is a crop frame, one to one and 16 by nine. One to one, I guess if you wanna put it on Instagram, 16 by nine is very long and thin. I personally just choose FX or DX. I do turn on this crop alert, so when I put it into DX for whatever reason, I there's a little light that flashes, little icon that flashes that tells me I'm in DX mode. Image quality, I like to go with raw, generally shoot raw whenever possible. There's times where I might want to shoot JPEG if I'm trying to crank out photos very quickly, but RAW is my standard. You have a lot of different options here. The interesting thing is Nikon, for whatever reason, does JPEG normal as the standard or I don't know why. I wouldn't do that. At a minimum, I shoot JPEG fine. You also have the option, like I said before, of putting RAW into one, JPEG in another. Uh, if you do that, I would say RAW plus JPEG fine. But since I like to shoot with RAW, I'm just gonna leave it at that is. Image size settings, that doesn't work with RAW. If I put it back into JPEG fine, go down to image size settings, you can actually determine if it's gonna be a large, medium, or small image. Uh, that doesn't function when you're in RAW. RAW recording. This works with both cameras. You have a lossless compression, high efficiency star, 
or just high efficiency. In my experience, high efficiency star looks no different than lossless compression. You can't tell the difference. And the image file is much smaller. Most editing software out there will work with high efficiency star, but some will not. So you need to check that out before you start taking photos. ISO sensitivity settings. So I always set it at the lowest level just to start, although I'm almost never there. Auto ISO sensitivity control, right now sit on on. This is kind of up to you depending on your shooting situation, either on or off. If it's on, you need to set the maximum sensitivity. In my case, I never go above 16,000 with either the Z8 or the Z9. I think that's about its upper limit when it comes to grain and color. I find if you go much more than that, especially up around 25,600, uh, you start getting color shifts that I don't like, and so 16,000 is the farthest I'll go. White balance, again, depends on what you're shooting. If, I, if I'm in daylight, it'll be direct sunlight. Indoors or at night under lights, Outside, I like auto, zero, keep white, reduce warm colors. Set picture control, I just put it on standard. You have all these different options. This is really for JPEGs or if you import it into Lightroom, Lightroom will, and you could you tell it to use one of these picture controls, it'll do it, but I just set it on standard for sports. Manage picture control, you can make some specific edits in your picture control. So at this point in time, Z8 has something in its menu called set picture control. HLG. HLG is a format that's supposed to give wider latitude as far as exposure and how it handles highlights. I have not used it extensively, so I'm not going to make a lot of comments, good, bad, or indifferent about it. However, if you do use it, I know Lightroom will edit it. I know NX Studio will edit it, but you have to download a specific codec from Nikon. I'll probably try it out this coming school year when uh, the, the, all the games are back in enforce just to see how good or bad it is. But for now, just know that you have to download that codec to actually use it on your computer or else Lightroom and NX Studio will not recognize it. All right, so moving on, color space, sRGB. Uh, you can also have Adobe RGB. I have found most organizations that I do work with like sRGB, so I just leave it there. Active delighting, this is really for JPEG, not so much for RAW. You can use it, you can turn it on, and basically all it's trying to do is bring up the shadow areas automatically. I just do that in post. Long exposure noise reduction, not really a thing for, for sports. This is for like, you know, astrophotography, not really an issue here. High ISO noise reduction, you have a high normal low off. I prefer high, and this really only affects JPEG shot with in-camera noise reduction. Not something I normally use, but if I do, I set it on high. Vignette control, just put it on normal, it works fine. Diffraction compensation, yes, turn it on. Auto distortion control, yes, turn it on. Photo flicker reduction. There's been a lot of controversy about photo flicker reduction. I don't understand the controversy at all. I use it all the time. It's not necessary to use it during the day in regular sunlight. It doesn't have an effect at all. Indoors or at night under lights in a stadium or on a field, it comes in very handy to modulate the exposure and the color scheme or the color white balance that you see with the image records. The camera automatically compensates for the variation in output that naturally cycles through uh, lights on the fields. Uh, the only time I see it have a problem is usually outdoors where there are two different types of light sources, two different types of bulbs that are being used, and they cycle differently. That's the only time I've actually seen it fail. Some people claim that it actually causes your camera to stutter. I have never experienced that. I don't know what they're talking about. So I turn it on. And like I say, if you just leave it on during the day, it won't do anything. So the next up is high frequency flicker reduction. I leave this off. I don't see any point in using it. It probably has some use for video where you can really see it, but to try to dial in very specific, tiny, minute shutter changes, shutter speed changes, I've never seen any point in it, and it's really a pain when you're trying to change shutter speeds very quickly, so I turn it off. Metering. I prefer matrix metering for sports. I have seen people claim that spot metering works well. I have not found that to be true. For example, you're shooting outdoors, you have one opponent wearing white, one opponent wearing a, wearing a very dark color, say very dark blue or even black. Guess what? 
spot meter is going to hit that white uniform. It's going to underexpose. It's going to then switch over to the players who are wearing very dark uniforms. It's going to hit that very dark uniform and want to overexpose it. So I found matrix metering generally works better than these other metering modes for sports. Flash control, this only works with specific Nikon flashes that I don't own. So I'm not going to really go through it. But if you own those flashes, and I'll list them here, uh, then you can control the flash from the camera itself rather than on the back of the flash. Focus mode, I set it for continuous autofocus. I have no use for single autofocus or manual focus in sports. Zero. End of story. Uh, AF area mode, I, this is just a starting point. You could change it whenever you want to. This is just the starting point. I prefer wide area, autofocus small for about 90% of the sports photography I do. Autofocus subject detections, it works great. I have found it works very well and it's gotten better as Nikon has updated the firmware. I set it for people because I'm shooting people with sports. However, you're shooting like dog sports, you might want to put them on animal. Vibration reduction, I don't have a uh, Z-mount lens on it right now that has vibration reduction built into it, but if I did, this would light up and you could turn it on and you could control the lens. Auto bracketing, don't use it. Multiple exposure, don't use it in sports. HDR overlay, same thing. Don't use these things. Auto capture is a new mode that came out in number four uh, firmware. It allows you to set up the camera so that it will automatically fire if a subject comes into a particular spot or a distance or part of the frame. Now there's a couple settings I did not go over with the Z9 that are in the Z8 specifically. One, uh, and both of these really apply to portrait shooting. One is called skin softening. That's something I really worry about with um, sports photography. The other is portrait impression balance. And that allows you to change white balance and the uh, color shift and exposure for portraiture. Again, it's not in the Z9. And again, it's not something I would normally set up with sports photography, so I just leave those off. So there we have the photo shooting menu. Now we're gonna switch over to the custom settings menu. All right, so just like the photo shooting menu, the custom settings menu also has banks that you can change and vary. Again, I'm just gonna set this up for sports for today. Going down here to focus and we'll go down it all. I will tell you that the menu for the Z9 and the Z8 are extremely similar. There's only a couple little things. The Z9 adds a couple items, which changes the numbering system between the Z9 and the Z8, but they're very minor, I'll, and I'll go through those real quickly. So the first item is AFC, autofocus continuous priority selection. I like release. I like the camera firing when I push the shutter button. I don't want the camera stuttering in any way. So your other options are focus and release and focus Personally, I just leave it at release. The other two will want to try to not shoot the camera until focus is achieved. But on a fast moving subject, it's constantly changing in the cut. And I will tell you that the camera will stutter significantly, especially on the focus mode. So I put it on release. AFS to priority selection, I leave it on focus. Uh, it's, again, AFS is not something I use with uh, when sports because I leave it on autofocus continuous because I am controlling focus completely with the back button, the AF on button on both these cameras. So I don't need AFS. Focus tracking with lock on. I just leave it at the default. Three with steady. And I have found that works most of the time for most sports. Uh, you could suggest that maybe perhaps some sports might work better if you're going over to, you know, quick mode where it, it shifts focus quicker if there's somebody who crosses over or delayed is better. I just find that three and steady works pretty well. Uh, I don't really have a need to change. Focus points used, either all points or alternating points. So with this one, it really just is saying how quickly, if I change the focus point inside the viewfinder, how quickly it moves. Is it going from one to the next or is it alternating from one point to the next in there? And the alternating would speed it up going across or up and down. It does not affect the actual focus points actually used for focusing, just how fast you move the focus point around the frame. I use all, doesn't seem to affect me anyway. Store points by orientation. I would put this at focus point and AF area mode. So once you set it, 
whatever your focus point is or whatever your area, if area mode is, it locks it in. So if I'm shooting horizontally, it puts it where I, where I had it. If I switch to vertical, it leaves it where I had it. You can change it around. I like this mode, I love it a lot, and I don't want it to change when I go from vertical to horizontal. I don't focus activation, I like to use back button focus with that AF on button that's on the, the back of the camera, so I leave it there. Limit AF area mode selection. You have a wide variety of options here, as you can see, I have not clicked them all. Let's start at top. Pinpoint autofocus is just a smaller single point autofocus. I've never used that. I personally really like dynamic area autofocus small. Um, I don't use the medium and the large so much. I do like the wide area uh, small. Don't use the large very much. I like the C1 and the C2, I like, cause you can vary those and you can change the shape of them. So I really don't like the 3D tracking. And auto area autofocus I never use for sports. In fact, I almost never use it for anything. And basically the camera is looking over the entire frame and making a decision as to what it autofocuses on, which in sports would be not good. Focus mode restrictions, I leave it on continuous autofocus. If you've got back button autofocus going, you can control, you can do single shots, single frames. You don't need even need AFS. Once you get the hang of that, it works great. So I leave it on continuous autofocus. Focus point wraparound, I turn it off. Basically what this is, is you're, if you're moving the focus point off to one side, it comes back around the other side. Uh, I don't like it. When it hits the one side, I like to be able to move it back. Just a personal thing, you may have a different opinion. Focus point display, I like all these lit up. Built-in autofocus assist eliminator, I would turn this off. Basically what it does is puts out a little light to help it focus in dark environments, but you don't want that. You don't want that little light. Besides, if you're using a big lens, it's probably gonna get blocked anyway. And that the subjects are moving very quickly, it's not gonna help. And I don't want a light, little light coming out the front of my camera, so I turn this thing off. Focus peaking, you can turn this on. It's mostly for manual focus. Focus point selection speed, I like high. Uh, you could do a little normal on low, but I like it on high. And basically, you can see right there, focus point selection speed. Choose the speed at which the camera cycles through focus point while the multi-selector sub-selector is pressed. So easy exposure compensation, I actually turn it off. I like to use the uh, exposure compensation button on top, but you may want to turn it on, try that out. Matrix metering face detection, I turn it on. It actually works pretty well. I've been surprised by it. Basically, you got matrix metering going on, you have a subject in frame, it'll actually meter off the person's face, which is great when they are like in shadow and they have a, you have a bright background, it throws them off, or vice versa, you have a dark background, your subject is well lit. It helps with that. I will tell you, it tends to work better with folks who are more light-skinned. People who are very dark-complected, it tends to overexpose them. So you have to keep that in mind. Center-weighted area, I set it on standard. I don't even use it, as I said. So fine-tune optimal exposure. So depending on if you use matrix or center-weighted or spot or highlight, you can actually fine-tune it in different ways. But I don't really use this because I just leave it on matrix metering. If I find that the camera is a little off, one way or the other, high or low, I'll use the exposure compensation button on top and make the changes myself. I won't go into the menu here. So I'm not sure when I would ever use this. Keep exposure when F changes. I like to set it on ISO. I like to control exposure through ISO rather than shutter speed or aperture. So therefore I put it on ISO sensitivity. So this next one, shutter release button, auto exposure lock, I turn it on. And I turn it on with burst mode. And what this does is, so say I'm tracking a subject, I start shooting it, what it's gonna do is keep the exposure the exact same throughout. So later on when I'm editing the photos, I'm using the ex same exposure for everything in that series. Maybe I wanna get multiple photos from that series. The only downside to this is if you're in a situation where the subject is moving from very dark areas to very bright or vice versa, it's gonna throw it off. So you have to keep that in mind. So if you're on a bright day, but then there's like severe shadows coming off and they run through those shadow areas, it's gonna throw it off. Self timer, don't use it in sports, power off delay. Uh, you could set this based on how you like to do it, playback menus, picture reviews, it, that's kind of up to you. Continue shooting speed. So on this one, I set it at 15. Now you could go to 20, 
but I have found 15 works just fine. I really don't have any issues shooting at 15 as opposed to 20. And at 20, you get a lot more images to call through than you do at 15. So I've set it at 15. Maximum shots per burst, you can set this however you like. I never go to infinity or almost never go to infinity. So next up, limit release mode selection. I only shoot raw. And so I leave it a single frame, continuous low, continuous high. If you're shooting in JPEG, you can also do 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second. I don't see a lot of use for that in the work that I normally do, although it's certainly an option, kind of a cool option but that only works in JPEG. Pre-release capture options allow you to set the camera so it fires a little bit before shutter initiation and about one second after, or actually you can change that to a bunch of different things. I set it up for this. This is not a function I use a lot, but it does come in handy. Sync release mode options. This has to do with multiple cameras. Closure delay mode. I don't use this in sports. Uh, this is really designed for if you've got your camera, like say you're doing a landscape with a long exposure, you don't want to vibrate the camera, you can set a delay when you press the shutter button so you take your hands off and the vibrations end. Again, not something I normally shoot with sports. Extended shutter speeds, yes, turn them on. Limit selectable image area. You have different options here, FX, DX, one to one, 16.9. We kind of talked about this. I only use FX and DX. File number sequence, I turned it on. I like it continuing. Uh, you Sometimes for different events, I have reset it where it goes all the way back to zero with the file numbering, but normally I just turn it on. View mode, photo, uh, live view. You have two options, show effects of setting and adjust for ease of viewing. I like to see the effects in my viewfinder with different settings. Starlight view, not doing that in sports. Warm display colors, that's for nighttime viewing. And it's dark out, not under stadium lights. Uh, I don't use it. LCD illumination, I turn this off. If I need it, I'll just use the, the control button up here to turn on the LCDs. Uh, otherwise it's burning batteries. View all in continuous mode, I turn it on. Release timing indicator, not really a factor. Image frame, not really a factor, I, but I'll turn it on. Grid type, three by three, the virtual horizon, that's something I worry about. Now let's go to custom monitor shooting display. So it gives you all sorts of options when it comes to the shooting display. I personally like all my cameras to look exactly the same. So Z8, Z9, I'll set them up exactly the same. I like this particular display, number one. And what you can do is you can actually add more items to it if you so choose. I'll throw like a histogram in there. Custom viewfinder shooting display. Again, you have four different options. You can do different things. I set up the viewfinder very similar to what I do on the back monitor. High frames per second viewfinder display. This basically smooths out the view when you're doing high frames per second. I turn it on. So next up is flash sync speed. This one's very important. If you get nothing out of this, I would turn this one on for sure. You want to set it to either this 1 250th S auto FP or 1 200th of a second auto FP. I don't think there's a difference between the two of them, to be quite honest. But you want to turn it on this one because the default is down here at 1 200 S. You don't want that. And the reason being is outdoors, bright day, but you want to do fill flash or you want to use the flash in a bright environment and you want to use high speed sync can't use high speed sync unless you put it on these auto FP modes. So that's very important. If you leave it on 200S or down here on 1 200, 1 200S, what's gonna happen is what you might, you might get black banding from the shutter. You don't want that. So put it on one of these auto FP modes. Flash shutter speed, 1 60th of a second, that's fine. Exposure compensation for flash, I put it on an entire frame. Auto ISO for flash, sensitivity control, I prefer subject. Modeling flash is another one you wanna uh, adjust from the standard. The standard is on, you don't want that. You want it off. And the reason being is if you have a flash that uses, that's capable of doing modeling flash, what'll happen is if you have this on, it'll wanna do the modeling flash. You don't want that. It, you'll be wondering why your camera's not firing. So turn it off, unless you really want that modeling flash. Auto bracketing mode, not something I normally use. Bracketing order, again, not use. Flash burst priority, I do precise flash control. 
If I'm gonna use it, I want it to work correctly. Now we get into the customizations of the camera itself and the eye menu. This is really totally dependent on what you like to adjust and change and set up your camera. Me personally, I like, for the most part, the buttons doing what they are originally assigned to do. About the only change I have made to both cameras, the Z9 and the Z8, is I like to change this top button, uh, I think it's called F1, change that one to where I could switch from FX to DX at a moment. Other than that, that's about the only button I have changed. But that is just me personally. You might wanna do something very different. At this point in time, we're in the video menu. Uh, I'm not gonna go through this right now because this is primarily about sports photography. However, if you're the type of person who shoots both stills and video, with just a flick of the uh, switch on top here on the back of the camera, you could go basically to video mode and it's already set up and it, you don't have to switch over to some sort of specific video menu, which is great. I'm not gonna go through video settings right here. I might do that later on in another YouTube video, but in the meantime, you know it's there. All right, everybody. Well, I appreciate you being here today as we talk about camera settings for sports for the Z8 and the Z9. If you got something out of it, I would really love it if you'd hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, man, eh, might want to think about that hitting that subscribe button too. All right, until next time.